Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, I thought I'd do a, a quick little uh, bonus video for, for today. Um, last Friday uh, we looked at the um, Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway models that I decided I was no longer going to have uh, a use for. Um, my idea originally of a kind of um, Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway um, goods station uh, with a passenger line etc. Um, I don't have room for and, and I decided to uh, sell the models both of which are reasonably uh, rare they're currently both available still um, I'll put a link up here to that video if you want to go uh, check those out there's a Dapol uh, Lancashire Yorkshire Railway lined uh, Pug Loco which is reasonably rare there's not too many of them around and then there's um, a National Railway Museum exclusive uh, model of the uh, LMYR 26, uh, 242 uh, tank one of one of one of only a hundred uh, models that were released um, under that but um, the reason I'm holding a tube of super glue is in that video I mentioned that I had uh, at least one more of the Dapol um, pug locos in the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway livery but that I'd ruined it and wouldn't be uh, selling it and the reason I'd ruined it was super glue and I thought that I would show you uh, the mess I'd made uh, and then talk about what I learned from that and what I now I now do. So this is the model. So this is basically uh, the same as you saw uh, last time. Um, but if we take a closer look at the cab side, in fact, if I take the cab off, it comes off quite easily. Um, we can have a we can have a closer look. So um, if I get the camera to focus, get okay, on focus. There you go. Um, you can see that I added uh, work plates with a different number. Uh, so this is number eight. Um, I'm not sure why I picked eight. It might be to do with uh, what might have really run out of Peniston. I'm not. I'm not sure. Um, or it might have been actually because I was trying to model the one with the spark arrester. Um, so I actually print. I had this 3D printed. It was the first thing I I had 3D printed via Shapeways. Um, so it was my first 3D uh, design. Um, and essentially I couldn't find one, there was a model that was sold with a spark arrester and I couldn't find one to buy. Um, so I printed the spark arrester uh, and it just slots over the chimney. Um, so you can see how it would how it would look, uh, something like that. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, so I think it may have been that I, re I was trying to renumber it to match the one of the ones with the spark arrester. But they were lovely plates that were etched um, by uh, Narrow Planet. Uh, if I get the camera to focus you should be able to see it. Um, and yeah, they're really, really nice. But as you can see, um, I've made an awful mess of this cab side. So in the light, you can see all the lines. Because what happened was I put super glue on the plate, put the plate on the side and it moved. And by the time I'd readjusted it, there was dried super glue everywhere and it was just an awful mess. So what I tried to do was just paint over it with black. And from a distance, it's not too bad. But obviously, when you look up close, it, it's horrible. Um, stupid camera come on uh, when you look up close it's pretty horrible um, so yeah I'm not I'm not selling I'm not gonna sell this one both sides one side's a bit better than the other but but I had to paint on both sides this one you can say I actually damaged the works plate trying to slightly move it and readjust it um, so the whole thing's the whole thing's a mess um, so I think given I'm gonna keep this we're gonna have to keep this one my plan is probably to try and the, get a cop, get hold of one of the high level kits for replacing the chassis. As you can see on this one, the motor takes up an awful big chunk of the cab, um, so that it's, they've filled in the sides of the of the cab opening here so to try and hide it a bit. But when you put the cab on, if I can get it back on again, it comes off really easy. It's a bit harder to go back on. Um, you can see that the cab is just full of motor and wires and looks a bit unsightly. You can even see them wires straight through the door. Um, so my plan is probably to try and replace the chassis with the high-level one, um, which gives you a full kind of detailed backhead. Um, and then I will try and do something about this side. Now, <clears throat> I'm not quite sure what the best to do is. I'm obviously going to have to rub it back slightly. Um, I might get away with just kind of rubbing it back slightly and then, I don't know, um, I might have to find some lining transfers and at least reline some of it I don't know quite what I'll have to do but my hope is that I might be able to turn down um, some of the differences uh, and then weather this to crazy um, to kind of hide some of the the shame but um, 
yeah, it, it it seems it seems silly to just throw it away. So I might as well have some fun and as I say, build the build the chassis kit, I think, and turn it into a bit better of a better look. And if I can kind of weather this heavily, then hopefully I can hide some of some of this under the weathering. Uh, but what did what I learned was obviously the super glue is a nightmare. It's it's a pain because once it gets on, you can't get it off without making a mess. So what I now tend to do is <clears throat> I use varnish to glue the plates on. So I give the thing an initial um, spray of varnish to you know seal the colour and the paint and everything else. Um, and then I use, um, usually I think it's been, I can't get to my, my paints are away at the moment, I think it's been a Humbrol tin or, or bottle of varnish, but somebody, you know, basically it doesn't really matter. Um, you could probably use um, something like this. So this is obviously a gloss you wouldn't necessarily uh, want to gloss, but any kind of varnish that you can brush pray it essentially. Um, paint a little bit onto the back of the plate, put the plate in place and wait. And the varnish acts like a glue, but has the advantage that if it moves around at all, A, you can kind of wipe it off a bit, and B, when it dries, it's just varnish. It's not clumpy super glue. Um, and another layer of varnish over the top to seal the plate on. Um, tends to work really really well so um, yeah that's what I do now uh, when I'm having to when I'm putting plates on but this as I say these were this is kind of right back to the beginning of my uh, of my railway modeling uh, I'm actually trying to do something other than just buy the models I say I 3d designed and had printed the, the spark arrester and this was the first my first attempt at doing etched artwork so I drew these up as SVG files um, sent them off to narrow planet who kindly kind of turn them into the right kind of artwork for the etch I didn't know how to do the layers and stuff properly at the time um, so yeah so it would be nice to get this kind of properly uh, weathered finished and a, and a decent chassis so I think that's what I'm going to do so there's bound to be um, a series of model a series of videos when I eventually buy a kit and do that um, but for now I just thought I'd, um, I'd give you a little extra extra video and show you the the, the mess I'd the mess I'd made so yeah moral of the story varnish for gluing on the the number and works plates uh, to a mostly finished model um or a brand new ready to run model uh, and then a waft of varnish over the top to seal everything on works much better uh, and as i say the as we as i speak uh, the two lmyr models i have for sale uh, the other mint mostly mint pug and the uh, the 242 tank uh, are still available on ebay i will stick a link in the description to uh, both listings um, as well as the the video link i provided earlier if people are interested thanks for watching